Our Prime Minister recently said this. The Council of Eminent People, their job is to do the investigation and all that and report to me. So it, it is a government business. When we make a decision in government, we don't always publish it. Here's why that's a really bad idea. Imagine you were assigned a task, say, to build a boat. But you have no idea what kind of material you would be given. You don't know the wind conditions. You don't know the weather the boat might face. You don't even know how many passengers it would need to carry. Without information, you'd make a lot of bad decisions. And the boat would probably not make it very far. Now, imagine you had to enact a law, or design a school syllabus, or plan a city's transportation plans. A lack of information in these situations could be disastrous. That's why they say information is power. It's the power to make good decisions, and that's important at every level of society. This importance is not lost on world leaders. According to the United Nations, the right to know is a fundamental human right. In Malaysia, our government has acknowledged this by endorsing the Commonwealth Freedom of Information Principles and signing the ASEAN Human Rights Declaration, both affirming the right to seek information. Many countries have even enacted laws that oblige the government to make government information readily available. Such laws are known as freedom of information laws. Usually, these laws establish mechanisms through which citizens can request for government-related information and the government is legally obligated to provide that information. That helps civil society make better decisions. If you don't have the information to ask questions, either as a journalist asking questions, as a researcher um, to try to understand, or even um, as a policymaker. If you don't have these questions, you know you don't have the power to discuss them because those with information can say your information is inaccurate, and well, you can't challenge that <laughs> because you don't have the numbers yet. Basically, information helps us citizens to keep our government in check and to hold leaders accountable. Problem is, Malaysia only has freedom of information laws in two states, Selangor and Penang. The laws were gazetted in 2011 and 2012 and allow citizens to request for information from state government departments. Here's a quick how-to to use these state laws to get some info. To request information under the FOI, you need to download an application form and submit it to the relevant department with a 12 ringgit processing fee. Information officers appointed to each department will respond to your request within 30 days and if your application is approved, we'll give you access to that information. Of course, not all information is accessible, but the FOI laws place the onus on the government to declare certain things a secret and even then, the scope is very narrow. If it doesn't want to release a particular piece of information, it will have to justify that the information requested is of national security covered under a third-party agreement that could affect the financial interests or our country's relations with that third party or has a high possibility of damage to the government. Most documents of the Selangor State Legislative Assembly and local councils are now available online, which is already an important step forward as far as transparency is concerned. Thankfully, the Pakatan government has promised to implement freedom of information laws in its manifesto. Problem is, till the Official Secrets Act is repealed, a lot of documents will be still considered secret by default unless it's explicitly published. The Official Secrets Act probably needs to be repealed or severely restricted through an amendment. Also, at the same time, um, government also needs to change its policies to be more pro-transparency, uh, as in to publish documents, to publish data by default um, on their websites, rather than waiting for somebody to make an FOI request. The OSA is a law that bans the sharing of information that's been deemed, well, an official government secret. While it was supposed to protect national security by restricting the sharing of military and political intelligence, it's gone on a bit of a tangent. These are some of the things that have been classified as official secrets. The air pollution index scores from 1997 to 2005, sex crime statistics in 2011, local council plans, and infamously, the 1MDB Auditor General reports from 2016 to 2018. And it's examples like that last one that give the perception that the law is only a tool to silence political opposition. On top of that, 
its loose definitions have made it possible for pretty much any civil servant to declare any document an official secret. While the Act itself states that information needs to be declared a secret, in practice, it seems that everything is secret by default and it's only released if the ministry okays it. The problem with that is that then everything becomes a secret if it's not explicitly authorized as being public or uploaded in the public domain. And it's used for the triv most trivial matters. Um, you can't challenge it. And this is the worst part is that the penalties are severe. So in this case, somebody leaking national defense information, which is you know very harmful, it's a national security threat, would be jailed the same amount as, say, investigative journalist who publishes uh, an expose on, let's say, a local crime syndicate. The most obvious example of this act being used to abuse? This guy. He was charged under the OSA for possessing and sharing a page of the 1MDB audit report without approval and was handed an 18-month jail sentence. But that's not the only case. In 1985, a journalist was charged for reporting on alleged discrepancies in the funding process of a defence contract. In the same year, two journalists were fined 10,000 ringgit and expelled from the country for reporting on corruption allegations against then-Finance Minister Daim Zainuddin. In fact, from 2011 to 2016, there have been 28 cases charged under the OSA alone. Naturally, this has led to some experts perceiving the law as merely a tool for political oppression. So what's the point of having freedom of information laws when most government information is a secret that you cannot possess without landing yourself an OSA charge? And while the Pakatan Harapan government promised to enact the FOI Act, it did not promise to repeal the OSA. In fact, Prime Minister Tun Mahathir recently announced that the Council of Eminent Persons 100-day report will be kept a secret. Main concern from policymakers is that if you repeal something like the Official Secrets Act, you also repeal the mechanisms to protect things that are of vital importance. For example, national security, um, confidential um, meeting notes, for example, um, that could cause uh, diplomatic issues, personal data and whatnot. We've also seen suggestions where maybe it can be repealed. And these conditions you know, to protect national security can be actually implemented in an FOI. And this is actually done in the Selangor FOI Act. It it actually includes clauses on which information cannot be disclosed in an Information Act. With or without the OSA, the FOI Act would still be an important step towards improving our democracy. At the very least, there will be mechanisms for us to ask for government information. An FOI Act is such uh, an important thing. We can't trust the goodwill of politicians. Um, just as we have criminal laws to ensure that people don't break laws, <laughs> uh, we can't rely on everybody to be good. <laughs> Similarly, we can't rely on politicians to keep their word. Forget books. Malaysian leaders and citizens can build a better nation together simply by having more information. So give it a go. Get informed and ask the right questions of our government.